Welcome to week three of the Courageous Kindness Bible Study. This week, we learned about serving others by bending low mm -hmm. and lifting up. Mm -hmm. On day one, we looked at the story in Mark 2 of the paralyzed man who was carried by his friends mm -hmm. and lowered down the roof to meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, what did this story teach you about how God designed us to need one another? And how is this a picture of courageous kindness to you? Mm. Well, I love the picture of the physical effort it mm. took for those four friends to come and try to bring their friend <laughs> yeah. to Jesus. I think it's a picture of courageous kindness because I think it probably took courage for those four guys right. to not stop at the obstacles before them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had this idea and who knows, like, was it, was it the man who was like, guys, like Jesus mm -hmm. is here. Like, would you bring me to him? Or were they right. like, right. dude, like you need some healing. And we right. know about this guy named Jesus and we're going to take you to him. Either way, they got there and this house, it was packed. Right. Like there was no way mm -hmm. that, you know, five men mm -hmm. were going to get through this crowd. And so I think sometimes like we can have, um, an idea in our mind or even something that God's asking us to do to, to show kindness or to do a good mm -hmm. deed. But if there's a, an obstacle, a barrier, That's we're like, right. oh, this this abort plan, like this yeah, isn't right. gonna work out. Mm -hmm. And they could have done that. But I think, so I think it showed courage that they're like, no, like mm -hmm. this yeah. is important. Like we're gonna find another way around. And mm -hmm. so think about the physicality of like carrying um, their friend like up to yeah, the roof and then right. getting down on their knees and like digging through this yeah. dirt roof and like that, that was not like a, let me just, yeah. let me just give you a word. Yeah. Words are important. So yeah. I can talk about that, but you know, like it was, it was kindness and action in a very physical way. And yeah. uh, I think that took courage. Yeah. It cost them something. Yeah, it did. And, yeah. Uh, and actually, did you know that the whole, um, that it's actually, it was cultural at that time. So mm -hmm. whenever there's a healer, mm -hmm. that the healer would be in a particular place and then your friends and family would take you mm -hmm. um, to the healer. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right, I, okay, I love that culture. I'm right. a little jealous that, <laughs> yeah. that that culture, like can we be in that culture? And, um, but what wasn't cultural, <laughs> right, is is what you said, like let's, um, Oh, there's a there's an obstacle mm -hmm. um, is packed, and so that took some creativity, yeah. mm -hmm. some commitment, yeah, and some perseverance, right? All of that, like yes. the, you know, this kindness to then the physical engaging this whole physical activity of you know cutting a hole in someone's roof, like mm -hmm. roof, like what um, audacity, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, For someone else's house. It wasn't right. I'm like, that wasn't even their house. And so they cut a hole in the roof, and then they had to be exact, right? Because yeah, I yeah landed on Jesus, then <laughs> messed up the whole thing for everybody. But no, they um, lowered him down right before Jesus. And so I don't know. I think about how they created a pathway to Jesus. Yeah. Now that a preach. Have you created mm -hmm. a pathway to Jesus today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or have you asked a friend to create a pathway right. to Jesus yeah, for you right. if you can't do it on and, your own? Yeah, and so they did that. They engaged in that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, then they got to be a part of and of this miracle and mm -hmm. witness this miracle. So yeah. I think about what a return on investment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> That's good. I like the flow of kindness. So from the friends to the man, from Jesus to the man. Mm -hmm. and. I mean, you know, I like magical things and I just imagine, you know, twinkles just flowing mm -hmm. throughout the room of everyone witnessing yeah. the yeah. power of um, courage, the power of kindness mm -hmm. and the power of God's miracle yeah. um, to heal the man. Um, and so kindness, yes, isn't just, um, let's say, like thoughts and prayers right. mm -hmm. um, and not meaning that. Right. I think thoughts and prayers are important right. when you do that or it leads to something, right. not just boop, 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 that's in prayers and yeah. it's over. Um, mm -hmm. But this was, yeah, kindness in action, compassion mm -hmm. in action. And mm -hmm. we get to see that in the story. Yeah. Right? I think sometimes like, you know, in our culture, we hear the word kindness and we can equate that with politeness. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Um, but I think this example, it was kind of impolite. Like to For think sure. about like, right. like bombarding yes. on yes. this gathering um That's and good. but so kindness it, it's it's risky mm -hmm. but it's worth it and like you were saying you know i i write about this picture of like a stone casting a ripple mm -hmm. and so i thought of that when you were talking about like kind of the the magic of it mm -hmm. of like okay. these well, ripple upon ripple yeah. and as each person saw this miracle taking mm -hmm. place and saw the beauty of these friends 
um, you know, bringing their friend to Jesus that is these ripples of, of faith building yeah. and faith strengthening and what testimonies came from right. that one act yeah. and, and Jesus' desire to show compassion. Right. I love what you shared about the culture. I feel like, isn't that the kindest thing we can do mm -hmm. to bring someone to the healer? Yeah. yeah. Um, we can make that, it, even though it's, that's not our culture, mm -hmm. we can make that um, yeah. the culture of the church or yes. the culture mm -hmm. among yes. believers. Uh, we can bring each other yes. that to can the be healer. our culture. We yeah. can make that our yeah. culture. Yes. Yeah. We have the capacity to do that. That's right. right. Yeah. And it all comes back to God's faithfulness and kindness, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I love the story in Exodus 17, where we see the power of lifting up mm -hmm. uh, one another. And as you guys remember, Moses mm -hmm. um, is in this position where God tells him, like, you need to keep your hands raised right. while the Israelites are in battle against the Amalekites. Otherwise, oh. Uh, if his hands drop, then mm -hmm. um, God's people will be defeated. Mm -hmm. And so Moses is like, okay, so he has, you know, he has his staff, but over time, his arms get tired. Right. He gets weary, and doing it alone would be impossible. Right. Um, I just wonder, like, how must Moses have felt, like knowing that, like, all this pressure was on him? But we know that Moses wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. because he had Aaron and her and they literally came and lifted up his arms and they even like rolled a boulder under his mm -hmm. bottom <laughs> to like prop him up. Um, and I just love that picture of like not being alone. And so I'd love to hear like what impossible season or situation have you faced mm -hmm. and how did God use the support of others to help you through that? Well, let's see, last year, um, the agency that I created, um, like it's called Brown City, and we focus on, um, and we're dedicated to racial healing and anti-racism. And so, um, at one point, yeah, our little we went from you know teaching, um, you know, hundreds of people mm -hmm. face to face, to then needing yeah. to teach thousands and thousands and thousands of people all at one time, right? Yeah. Um, through a broadcast, and um, I remember I. In that moment, you know, I couldn't even dream bigger or mm -hmm. think bigger beyond my, I didn't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine, she basically <laughs> brought me the vision and said, no, this is what it should look like. Mm -hmm. And I remember she laid it all out for me. And I said to her, I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> And I don't, I don't know who does that. And mm -hmm. how do I, I don't know how to get to this resource and that resource. And I mean, and essentially she laid out a major production. Wow. And then. And you but, saw the impossible. She saw vision and you saw. Well, yeah, I was just like, whatever. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I was thinking, okay, that's your vision. Yeah. But no, she, I mean, she really spelled it out to me. And I said, oh, you know, okay. But then she went about like gathering all these people. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, I mean, I, I remember walking into the building and I got there and the, I mean, it was a whole studio oh, wow. set up. Like, I, I know I would have had to pay, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I probably tens and 20, I don't know. So mm -hmm. see, I don't even know. Right. But I know I walked into the studio, it's already set up. I mean, my slides were wow. like professionally done. Like somebody had taken my little slides and just made it all look so pretty. <laughs> and I, I'm like, Oh, okay. And um, I mean, I had a makeup, we had makeup artists and we had people, you know, putting clothes. Wardrobe. And wardrobe. That's what it's called. Wardrobe. <laughs> I mean, I, all the things that you need. I mean, there's no way I could have pulled it together. And, and just even all of these details mm -hmm. came the details. together, like how I was able to get a hair appointment mm -hmm. with a person who is hard to get, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. all of these things just came into my children were taken care of, wow. everything just all mm -hmm. fell in line. Everybody was there. We had a, you know, a director, all of that. Um, and I just think about like, yeah, I had this impossible situation mm -hmm. and it really wasn't about me. It was about the thousands of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mm -hmm. I had thousands of people that we were serving, mm -hmm. you know, through that one broadcast that, you know, continues to have this ripple effect yes. because we still have that yeah. and yeah. people still get to, you know, access it. Act, and, thank you. Yes. Access it. Yes. So mm -hmm. it wasn't about me. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And God, and you, and when you didn't even know what kind of support you needed, I, God was like, I got yeah, you. I got you. Here's Renee. Yeah. <laughs> and then Renee knows people. And then yes. those Renee, people know people. Right. And, and, and yeah, and the people were, 
even just happy and excited and honored to be a part of this, what God, how God was serving yeah. all these people. The magical flow of kindness. I yes. know. I was thinking yes. it sounded fun. It sounds fun. Mm. And, and exhausting. Okay. But, yes. and exhausting. But it yes. was fun. Yes. 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 <laughs> just yeah. to have, even for you to, I mean, I've led things before and knowing yeah. all the ins and outs of what happens behind the camera. Right. And you just showed, you showed up showed and it up. was set up for you. And I love that. It, it's like the... A table being set. Before. That's right. It yeah. was just like and that. All you had to do was take and eat. That's right. I was yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, for me, you know, I, I just shared about how we shouldn't necessarily say thoughts and prayers and not mean it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes that's all one can do to help someone else. And mm -hmm. so I was, um, you know, I shared earlier about how the early days of motherhood, um, especially with my first, we were very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. I was. I think I was more severely depressed than I could, I knew at the time. Mm. Um, and so it came to a point where I just couldn't anymore. And mm. there are seasons and moments like that where yeah. you just can't even imagine how you can go one more day. And yeah. I remember putting my daughter down and just coming downstairs and thinking like, I need to get out. I can't do this anymore. I need to get out. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably, I, I've had suicidal ideation, but I think that was the first time I like had a very concrete mm -hmm. plan of what I could do in the moment with my resources. Wow. Um, and that scared me. I didn't think my mind would go there. I knew it could go there, but I didn't know it would. Um, and so sitting there, I was so shocked by myself and mm -hmm. all I could do at the time, it was late at night and I just texted friends, um, mm -hmm. trusting that people, you know, on the East coast or anywhere else, um, could see that and and pray for me. Mm -hmm. And I started getting, you know, texts from friends and them saying that we're praying for you. And something about that, I felt buoyed. Mm -hmm. Like I, like I was order. drowning. Yeah. And and I didn't think there was anything that could lift me out mm -hmm. of that anymore. Um, and it was the prayers of my friends um, mm -hmm. booing me up and bringing me back to the surface. Um, it didn't take it away. It just right. helped me in the moment to take a breath and yeah. to know I can make it to wow. the next day. And that really felt like um, being held, maybe like the, you know, that man of right. being held by his friends mm -hmm. and being carried to the healer. Yeah. Um, and that's what happened for me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I love that, these different pictures of how much we need God and others to come alongside us in our journey, yeah. both like in exciting, you know, mm -hmm. like career growth kind of mm -hmm. moments in ministry and in like the darkness right. of mental illness and just yeah. the trenches of motherhood. Like it's, it's, we, we need, we each, need other. It. We need yeah. each other all the we time. Yeah. Um, and we need the God any, like, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I have so many stories that I can share <laughs> about how God has used other people in my life because right. I I need I need him, I need them. But on day three of this week, I shared a story about um, how I was starting graduate school, which was kind of an insane thing to do <laughs> because I had um, three little kids at the time. Oh. I was working part time um, at a job that was not my joy before mm -hmm. Encourage. Okay. This yeah. is my joy. <laughs> um, but and um, doing ministry, it just like my plate was already beyond full. And then God was like, and here's this door to higher education and I'd like you to walk through it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't have enough brain cells for this <laughs> right now. And I definitely don't have enough time. Right. And so I saw God's kindness come through an unexpected way. I was like, I don't, all my friends, like I didn't know where the support was gonna come from. And God didn't give me an Aaron or her, but he gave me a Sarah. Mm -hmm. And my friend Sarah was this unexpected friend who had a son who was the exact same age as my youngest son, um, because my two older were either in preschool or, or kindergarten, so they were occupied for a few hours. Um, and this unexpected friendship, Sarah just came alongside me and was like, why doesn't Jude come over to our house for today? And why don't I take Jude and Mateo on this outing and that outing? And over and over again, right when I needed it to finish a book or write a term paper, there was Sarah saying, oh, and by the way, I cooked extra extra Aww. food, like, and here's some dinner. Wow. And that's amazing. Just over and over again. And, and uh, you know, at times I think we can end up feeling like, or I can, like it's, it's almost too much or like mm -hmm. I'm never gonna be able to, to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. um, and yet what I saw was, is that she was equally blessed. 
mm-hmm. by this new friendship right. and blessed by her son was an only child and to have oh, a, a playmate yeah. for him. And um, anyhow, I just think about people who even ask me like, how did you, how did you do, you know, grad school in that time of your life? And I was like, I didn't do it alone. That's right. Like right. Yeah. I did not do it alone. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, we're not doing this by ourselves. And I just think about how for her, it was probably an honor for her, mm-hmm. you know, to connect. It's an honor. Like if you yeah. ever send me a text or something that says, pray for me, yeah. oh my gosh, I feel yeah. so it's honored. True. You know, yeah. I, you know, people were telling me, oh, I'm honored to work with you on this wow. yeah. project. Yeah. So we get this, you know, yes. it is reciprocal. Yeah. You know, it is, mm-hmm. it is the ripple. It is the flow mm-hmm. back and forth that happens. Another biblical account we looked at this week was in John 9, uh, where Jesus is out walking along and comes across a blind man. Mm-hmm. And we know there was some saliva involved <laughs> and some dirt right. and yeah. some mixing yeah. and, this was a, and applying. A messy miracle yeah. in the yes. making. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Messy miracle in the making. <laughs> I love that. So. I'd love to hear, um, first, what hinders you from responding to the needs in front of you? Mm-hmm. And second, um, what do you learn from Jesus' example? Mm-hmm. You know how I talked about how Jesus had a posture of observing? Mm-hmm. He paid yeah. attention, he noticed. Um, and I think for me, what keeps me from responding to the needs around me is is just being mm-hmm. busy. Yeah, We live in a time and culture where busyness is prized Mm -hmm. as a marker of um, success or as a marker of um, you made it. Yeah, prized and praised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And so I think that keeps me when when our calendars are full or when, you know, if Jesus was so focused on getting to where he was going, Mm -hmm. he wouldn't have been able to notice Mm -hmm. uh, the blind man. And it says that he saw him. So busyness, dehumanizes us, right? When we're too busy, we're not even looking at each other in the eye. We're just going about our own work, our own lives, our own agenda. Mm-hmm. And it's when we slow down and when we have that posture of observing like Jesus did, that we can notice and that we can uh, humanize one another again. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying my best not to be too busy mm-hmm. um, and be more like Jesus to notice on my way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's really good. and. You know what you said about sometimes where if you know if we're so focused on where we're going mm-hmm. that that on our wayness just becomes like a pathway to like what we have in mind right. as opposed mm-hmm. to being open to really like you said seeing the people in front of us mm-hmm. and i think also where we've been can be a distraction mm-hmm. and so this is like what i see in jesus example here so right before um we read in john 8 like right before jesus passes this blind man mm-hmm. he was actually escaping uh angry jews in the temple who wanted right. to stone him mm-hmm. right. like yeah. not a great day for jesus right um, <laughs> and what this tells me is that acts of kindness aren't reserved for right. when we are at full capacity or mm-hmm. like when we are having a great day. But mm-hmm. I think about in my own life, like what I've been through, where I'm going, or just plain being distracted. Like yeah. if I'm, you know, literally like on my way down an aisle in a grocery store, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm thinking about like the the crummy thing that happened, you know, an hour ago, I'm not seeing the person in front of me. I'm not just even aware Mm -hmm. that there could be a need that God might want to use me to help Mm -hmm. meet. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, help me just to be present. Help help me to not be distracted by my own thoughts, what has happened, what's going to happen. And just, I see Jesus living moment by moment. Right. And I mean, I I was thinking, Grace, when you were talking about how, uh, you know, being culturally busy, Right. Is, you know, something to be praised. Mm -hmm. And yes, also um, planning. Right. So let's plan Mm -hmm. our kindness, which I mean, I think is not a bad idea, but it it isn't always about, you know, it being planned. It isn't Mm -hmm. like, well, I've set aside this money, Mm -hmm. you know, to hand to someone who is on the street corner and Mm -hmm. ask for a dollar. I mean, then I think that's great um, to plan for that and to be prepared. But like in this um, particular story, like Jesus by him, the healer, remember? Mm-hmm. So remember healing in this culture, your fa- your friends and family brought you to the healer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in this story, Jesus is going out. Right. So, you know, it says, 
um, as yes. Jesus was walking along. So mm -hmm. he was kind of taking his gift at, away from the mm -hmm. kind of the, the demand for him to stay mm -hmm. in one spot. Yeah. 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 And he's like going out to people that need yeah. um, his gift. And so, again, he, he's subverting his, he's subverting culture. Mm -hmm. And I think about that for me, like, well, how can I have, you know, you know, opportunity Mm -hmm. uh, to to show kindness, like in mm -hmm. the moment, in yeah. the present, you know, if I won't even go out of my own cultural right. comfort zones. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah, there's so much access that Jesus gives by going that's yeah. right out. Right when right. he's when we stay in one place, it keeps it all centralized. Mm -hmm. But right. when we go out or when we go out of our comfort zones, then right. we decentralize that, and people can have more access. And that's right. And Jesus did that. Yeah, and he just yeah. used like what he. Here's some saliva and here's some yeah. like so yeah, you don't right. even you don't even have to have like okay I have my dollars yes, so you know right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have everything planned yeah. like no I'm creative yeah, I, I can improvise yeah. here's yeah. some here's this yeah. and here's nice. some of that <laughs> mix it together yeah you can see yes, yes. <laughs> I can't believe we're already halfway through this study I know and we hope our discussion sparks good conversations with your group or guide you to further reflection on your own. There's always more to learn and we are learning right along with you. It's clear that kindness isn't always easy or comfortable, but it's so very worth it. Friends, let's open our hearts today to however God would ask us to bend low and lift others up. Wherever we are, let's not be afraid to get a little dirty and love someone with the same love God has lavished on us. Mm -hmm.